All right, everybody. I am so excited and wanted to share with you that, uh, and I'm excited about this page, my swatching page. So um, I was trying to work out what colors I want to do or what I was going to, to do going forward in this February 7th through 13th spread here in Joanna's lovely little weekly coloring planning. And I was going to be using, you know, I had pulled my Castle Arts and one Koinor um, watercolors. I was going to do very much what I did over here. And as you can see here, I was, I was swatching and going along. And then I went, oh, you know what? Maybe for some depth of color or something, what else can I use? And the thing is, is that I knew that if I go in with regular pencil, what I learned previously was that this, you, the blending is a real challenge. I don't mind it so much because you kind of go for a watercolor look and watercolors are not always blended really smoothly. In fact, I kind of like some of that mix match that you kind of get. But I was like, well, I wonder how my water-based markers and pens would work on this. And lo and behold, guys, I started doing this and you know you do your lines and normally you see lines very harsh lines between these in fact I, uh, let me just well uh, i have a yeah okay all right here coloring test so if i take that same marker on a non gessoed page when i do this and i back them up just a little bit to make sure that they touch one another. Do you see how they make those lines? And you know, this is the same for if I'm using my Crayola Super Tips. So that's the thing, and that's what we don't like, because when you go back in, you get these lines. So see how, and if you do that, you get where they cross over, and you get those lines, and you know, none of us really, really like that look. So I was thinking, I'll use these just in little small areas, you know, and um, for the depth of color. And also because I'm trying to, you know, to get this page done. But I knew they would have these lines. Well, not when you put them on gesso. You don't get those lines. Look at that. There is, I mean, you get the end puddling, but you don't get those lines. And I'm like, what? So then... <laughs> And I tried it with all of my Crayolas. The only thing you get sometimes, and it is gesso does make a change in texture on the paper. So sometimes I get these kind of like weird little things. But, you know, serendipity, maybe I'm actually going to like it. But this is all my Crayolas that I pulled that are kind of in this color scheme. And they also did not make their normal lines. Again, here's the green. If you can see it here, that black line's obviously printed. Pretty, pretty nice and solid compared to... What was going on here so yeah my heart started skipping a bit of a beat i'm a little strange i get it in fact i'm going to bring you in just a little bit closer so you can see so if you look there's no lines look up here it, no lines what 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 is going on what what magic is this so then i said well in that case let's do Oh, I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to take, well, I already did it, uh, some yellow and green. And let's see what happens. So I did a little bit of yellow. This is just a Crayola Super Tip. Fill it in, the lovely juicy colors. And then I did my green, and I'm like, something weird's going on. Because once again, see how it's not really making those lines. And then I took a wet brush. Oh yeah, look at that guys. <gasps> this is crazy. They're watercolors now. They're watercolors, do you see? And look, look, this is dry up here. This has been sitting for 15, 20, and I can even make it move that. That's a highlighter. That's a highlighter, guys. What? Come on. You got to be as excited as me. And if you're not, I'm just weird, I know. Um, and, you know, I was like, well, we're just going to play about a little bit. So I thought I would keep playing just to kind of get used to this. 
But this is, you know, again, a Crayola super tip. A Crayola super tip. A Crayola super tip. And then what happens? Put in a little bit of water and you start seeing movement. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? It totally behaves like watercolor. It's sitting up in the water at this point. Made a little bit of a mess there because I got so excited. But still, that is crazy to me. I mean, it's one thing to have where you don't have the lines. I mean, seriously, guys, watch this again. See, there's there should be a line there, right? And you're expecting that because that was dried. So I had a little line, but look, that that's all nice and juicy, moist. To, I, I'm, I'm blown away. So guess what we're doing this week? Yeah, we're going to play with this. That might make a complete muddle mess like that. I am just going to go in. I'm going to use my markers on this and I'm going to try the blending techniques and I'm just, I'm going to go nutso because I can't believe that. I am not even going to pick up the watercolor ones here. As you see, they weren't blending really, really smoothly, but I was also very much in a hurry. And um, I just kind of, it wasn't blending quite as nicely as I was hoping to. So let's see if I can make something using all these markers on gessoed paper and see where I go. So I hope, hope I, I, who knows, lessons, lessons learned. Let me tell you, I got a blob of gesso right there. So that'll be an interesting mark on the paper, but I don't care. I really don't. This is amazing stuff. I don't even know where to begin. Goodness me. Um, and they are dry, so that was that was something. Oh, let me just see. All right, so we just did that. Look, it was dry, people. It was dry, and then I wetted it, and now it's not dry. That is crazy. That is going to be crazy. It does tell me, most likely, what I'm going to probably end up is not doing the layers of watercolor like I, I did over here. So this might be a little bit harder for me to get depth. Um, I'm also will be interested in trying coming in after I've done the ink here or the, 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 the water base ink here of these different markers. If going in with some form of pencil might work, I don't know for some depth of shading, but we shall see. Uh, but it does tell me this does re-wet because that's crazy. That it okay. I did this at least 20 30 minutes ago. Now, this is a highlighter. Now, he's not moving. Well, yeah, no, he's starting to lift, if anything, but he's not moving. Uh, let's see, let's try this highlighter. Yeah, you can see it's lifting, in other words, it's lightning, but it's not necessarily moving. So, the highlighter is a little bit more permanent. Now, this was over. 15, 20 minutes ago, and let's see. This is the Crayola Super Tip. Yeah, see, they, they li they're lifting, but they're not, that one's not mixing, so there must have been enough moisture in that. That's kind of neat, because you can almost go in and do like reverse highlights if you've got something. That's gonna be something to think about, because look at that. Now see, it's, it's moving a bit. But it's also lightning, so if I wanted to do highlighting, that might be something. Let's see. How's this guy? Yeah, see, he re-wets as well, and then moves around. But he does lighten up. Un this is going to be bizarre, but so fun. Look at that. That was a pretty wet brush. Interesting. Again, these have been sitting here. I set up all of this to take a picture and stuff. Uh, so lights and, and filming and everything. Uh, and that's been sitting there that long. Wow. All right. 
I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to have some fun with it. And you know what? I this this just basically letting me my, myself go and wreck this thing has been the the greatest thing. I would have never tried this in a uh, Joanna Basford book, but who knows now? Wow. We'll see. We're going to see how it ends up and what it ends up looking like. Whew. All right. I am so excited for this week. I hope you are too. And I think I'm going to be really motivated to get this one. Ugh, unless I mess it up and then I'll get demotivated. But I'll tell you that too. All right. Back out again. And let me go get set up and so I can get onto this page. Woo! Fun week ahead. As you can see, I've already started kind of playing. And um, there's a little bit of control issues that I'm having, but you know, I have a plan overall of how maybe to do better. And hopefully by the time I get down near my flowers, I've really got it kind of well honed, I guess. But I love the colors. And basically what I'm seeing using is for a base, I'm just using this Stabilo. It's a swing cool is what the brand, the color or the, the style is. Uh, got these off of Amazon, of course, because where else am I going to go get art supplies right now? Um, so that's kind of the base color. And then I'm coming in with my two Crayola Super Tips. Now, Super Tips do not have names or anything else, but we're just going to say this is more of a turquoise color. And this is more of a maybe cornflower blue. Um, and the blue is, this blue is really kind of adding some of the depth of the color. And then the turquoise kind of brings it back into the family that mirrors it with this. So I'm just going to show you some of the things that I'm able to do. I will bring you in closer. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and close the book at this time so that I can lay it a little bit flat there. And what I'm going to do is end up doing it on this side over here. So I've done this side and I'll do it over here, repeat it, kind of show you what I'm doing. And then one of the things I will talk about though, and I'm going to use my handy dandy brush right here. I do want you to pay attention. There are imperfections and this is from the gesso. And that's just going to be a part of it because just like over here, there's a huge imperfection right here that we'll see in a little while. Um, and you know, there's stuff that's on, there's little clumps of it here and there. I don't know if applying it with a foam applicator would be better than a brush. That'll be something that I'll experiment going forward. Definitely trying to get as smooth of a lay down as possible. It balances itself out pretty well, but there are these moments and I've, you know, I noticed it whenever we were over here looking at that, how, how that has those little imperfections. That is the gesso underneath that's done that. But I am going to get over it and be fine with it because I actually kind of like those textures and that look. And that's if that means I can really start using these other supplies I have in such an effective manner, I'm, I'm too excited to be worried about that. But we shall see as I proceed over. So I'm going to move you over so that we can look here and we have kind of that this corner and so there's a couple ways that you can let me go ahead and get my pin or my my water in place because you do use water so i'm putting actually maybe i need to show you guys when i'm doing that all right so i am going in for water just don't want causing a shadow hmm hmm how do we make this work because <laughs> I, I want you to see where should I put the water if I put it over here I cross in front of you let me see so I have a paper towel and my water which just means I'm going to have to cross over in front of you guys <laughs> sorry because I, I, I want you to see that I am going into the water and I'm probably not going to be telling you all the time that I'm going into the water. I went ahead and clipped the page down trying to, so that it'll dry a little bit straighter. Um, this actually flattens out pretty well. I mean, you do see a bit of buckling uh, overall. And as we go, you'll see it to the side. But I, again, I think this gesso does a beautiful job. I'm already starting to think how I might be able to use this in some of the other of Joanna's books that I have. Um, so 
one of the ways that the way I initially started this was literally just going in and trying to to color and this you know has a wedge kind of uh, nib on it but it's still not gonna let me get into her teeny tiny details and by teeny tiny details yeah so I can actually come in with if I don't have tons of water on it and kind of move that around still so I'll get that into those corners the other option I have is in really small details you can actually do it straight from the nib and I know we've seen this with Tombows and things oh, I bet Tombows will be beautiful on this hmm oh to get my supplies out of the out of storage so that's another way to put it down. You can control it a little bit more because like I said, I've been having a bit of a control issue of it bleeding over into these other areas. Maybe I don't want colored at this point, but um, that's me just playing with this at first. Hopefully I will uh, get better control. The other option is I can put in three dots, four dots, however many dots, I can actually dot this up. Again, make sure that it's wet, but I do dry it off. I don't let it be sopping wet. You'd be amazed how much water these brushes, even these cheap little kids brushes that I have actually hold. And then I can move it around like that. Now this is just gonna be my first little layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that throughout this blue area so that uh, everything's there. And then we'll come back in with some of the more of the detailing. Um, so that's all I'm gonna keep doing is just probably doing some of the dots and then moving it around, getting that first layer. And I am going to head and letting it dry in between for this bottom layer because I'm gonna wanna get this blue a little bit darker than what it is right now. So it's really up to you what you find easier. And these really small details, I actually find doing it straight from the, the nib much, much easier to handle. Now, since these are working with Stabilos, I have a feeling midliners would still also probably work any of your highlighters, you know, but do a test page, make sure you gesso it because that's, that's what's making these not make streaks and be able to be something I can move. And see, see and play. I mean, we have these sitting around. A lot of us do. I know I do, especially as planner people. And, you know, I don't really use highlighters in my planner, but... I've been, you know, I still end up ordering them. <laughs> and as you see, I'm using a very inexpensive child's paintbrush. I just like the, I like the brush on it. And you don't have to have the highlighters. You could, you know, just do this straight with your Crayolas. Um, I just like this blue and I like that it's it's kind of giving a glow which I like for for this top part of the the page start darkening and the easiest way that I found this is probably also going to be from the tip let's see if that works a little bit better and you can just start taking that dark that blue that what we're gonna call cornflower blue I guess problem is, is my depth perception is really messing with my ability to touch that tip um, it's probably the first time that I've 
noticed that actually happening. So there you see it's gotten that time I got a lot darker, but I can walk this all the way around on this one pass. Here's what I'm talking about. See how that almost looked like it should have been dry, but then I added water back to it and it is now moving and getting lighter. So the shading with it and the transition into from light to dark is really quite fascinating. There, I'm just adding a couple dots because I really don't want it to go too dark. And now I'm going to come in and move those around a bit with just some water. And so you can even make those kind of disappear. So now I think that's too blue. Like it, there's too much of the blue pronunciation, you know, kind of pronouncing itself, announcing itself, however you want. And this is what happened up in the corner. So I want to go more of that little, that, this kind of the turquoise color. And so I can do it again, get some water, get rid of the blue, wipe it off just a little bit. And I'm going to bring it from this tip and see if I can get it in there and see that changes the value to have a little bit more of a turquoise color. So I'm testing, see how I kind of can test how much color I have on, by doing those dots and then come back in and move them about. Really interesting that it's able to do this. All right, now comes a moment where you're probably going to go, what? <laughs> I'm going to change brushes to, it's a number six. Um, it's an actual water brush. But you can see what I've done. I'm just doing here. I know, looks kind of scary. Why did you do that? Well, now I'm getting water in my brush. And look can move it so easily and then because I'm getting further away from the water uh, the the actual I don't have as much control with this brush as I did with the other which is but as I bring it out it gets lighter and lighter naturally so as I'm bringing it away from the ink that I just put on there And that's how I'm getting that color, that kind of from light to dark. I'm using also the arch, the wrought iron for lack of a better term, I'm calling it as a natural kind of break. And then I will go back and work on getting that transition a little bit better between what's on that side and what's on this side. All right, so there we go with that kind of blue. And now the next thing I think what I want to do is do a little bit of the green down here and start bringing it up. I'm kind of torn. I might want to come down actually 
and I'm probably going to start with some of my yellows. Now I have two yellows to choose from. I have my Crayola and my Stabilo. If I flip over here for a second and look, the Stabilo is pretty bright and so is the Crayola. So, but what I like is see this Crayola, how I could back it out and it started losing some of its color. So I think I'm actually use the Crayola um, and kind of work it around. Now I want to be careful because I don't want really like a suddenly a big green splotch. Um, so I'm not sure. I think I'm just going to work here for a while, get my almost like bands of color. So I want it to kind of go yellow and then you start seeing greens as if there's tall grasses and stuff behind here. And then we'll have a green to a yellow merge like the sun is out there. And then as you move up to the sky, it gets darker. So that's kind of the impression I'm trying to get to. We'll see how well I do it. <laughs> so I'm just going to start going in and kind of, and I always usually start from a side place to get used to it. So like from the side and in, maybe someplace kind of small. Uh, let's see, probably about here. So as you can tell, I'm not putting it all the way up to the blue yet. I'm going to get this yellow kind of set. And then what I think I might do is kind of pull from the yellow because we've seen that I can do that once, even if it's dried and I'll pull and blend it. All right, so I'm going to keep going, and then whenever I'm going to try to do the blend in, I'll bring you back for that. Hello, hello, everyone. Here we are with the next day. I, it has been everything I could not to continue just coloring this uh, because I was having so much fun. But I'm really glad that I let it dry, and I kind of started looking at it a little bit closer. So I'm really still liking this process. Again, a primed piece of paper here in the uh the planner with primed with gesso and let dry for 24 hours and then now we're going in with Crayola super tips and Stabilo highlighter so here's basically everything I've used so far on this page um, water and my little kid brushes which I really are a lot of fun and they work really well I was using a proper watercolor uh, brush I would say this holds way too much water and you don't need it. So the little kid brushes are working much better in my hands. Or I just have little kid brush hands and, you know, that's where I'm at. <laughs> um, so these are all the colors. Just Crayola Super Tips. Again, sorry, they don't have names. And then the, um, uh, the Stabilo Swing Cool because we just swing coolly, I guess. My little pot of water over here that I want to try to keep in shot so you can see how often I go into it. There are some things that I've learned in this process. Just want to go over those really quickly as I start. And that is um, the Crayola Super Tips are still movable. Uh, if I re-wet it, this is a dry piece of, or this was dry when, uh, this morning and I gave a little test and the Crayola still move. And the Stabilos are very stable. Uh, they are not moving once they got completely dry. So let me bring you in and show you something else that I noticed. All right. I'm just going to move that over here for just a moment. All right. So looking in these really dark green spots, particularly look down here at the mushrooms. Now, uh, it, it got messy. And I think what really was happening is my brushes, I just had them too wet. They really do not need to hardly have any water. Just in, you know, just enough that it's damp and flexible. Um, these Crayolas are now here, I guess this is the word <laughs> for the video, are extremely juicy and have a lot of liquid already in them. And so you really don't need to add a lot of water to make these blend. Now, if they've dried a little bit, maybe. Now, when I'm right now, I'm going in and doing my highlighter first, even now, because that paper has not dried 100%, 
I would be able to go in and kind of get these greens to mix with this background green of the highlighter. So water control, as in probably water coloring and uh, any type of ink that you work with is really important. So I have a little bit of messes here and there, but this is the first time I've done it, so I'm fine with it. Um, I'm finding again that these brushes are my best control. So what I'm going to do is just start and what I'm doing in these really small areas. Now I've already this one. We're going to go ahead and I'm just going to wet it and then really dry it off on my uh, paper towel here. And then I am just still doing the method of going from t the tip of the pen and again I am sure this is going to work with your Tombows beautifully um, my Tombows are in storage so that's not been happening I'm finding this is the best way to kind of control the amount of water and this first layer I can usually do pretty well and not get too messy it's the subsequent layers because stuff is still moving even once I go back in You know what I just realized? I grabbed my blue. I'm like, oh, these look different. So we're going to have a little bit of a difference. I just realized that that was my blue. And I want <laughs> green down here. Oh, so this should make for an interesting combination. Let's see what happens. See? Let's see. I'm going to put it over it. Now, I can tell already that my... Uh, my my brush was too wet. It actually was picking up some of the blue color and transferring it back into the wet brush because there was more water. And again, it kind of follows it. So it was picking it up off the, the thing. The ooh, That's a pretty color. Because I have a uh, upcoming, I noticed that there's an, another kind of under the ocean kind of Obviously, it's probably from Lost Ocean or something like that um, picture. And so I'm like, these colors would be beautiful for kind of a turquoisey water look. Something. So I just made a mistake and I colored in a spot that is obviously the... Um, the petal of this what well, looks like a pansy oh my gosh guys look i'm erasing ah! i caught it quick enough Ooh, cool so what i did there was i really wetted the um the tip of this and then using a fairly wet i it drew the the ink back up into here because this was wetter than that and it always wants to travel to water and it was like magic woohoo yay i didn't make a mistake no mistake to be seen here move along move along nothing to see yay and then we continue as if nothing happened All right, so I just brought you in a little bit closer so you can hopefully see this. And then, so like I said, I've got several greens here and I even sometimes come in with a little bit of the blue, uh, the turquoise, just to kind of add an additional color in there. Um, I am gonna go ahead and start with my darkest down here at the bottom and then we'll lighten up. And again, because this is so fiddly, I am really being very, very aware of not having much water at all. And we're just gonna do from the tip, and then I wanna see how this is. Yeah, see, you don't need any water. Those are plenty. Now, I normally would be all panicked because I'm thinking, oh, I'm leaving a line. There's gonna be such a demarcation line. There's not gonna be. And I, when I come in, it'll, it will react, activate it and be movable. So I'm going to go clear across the page. 
Uh, I think these are some steps that might help me stay a little bit cleaner, but we'll see what happens. Very nice blend. Okay, so you kind of get the idea. I'm going to go across again like I did, uh, all the way kind of filling in this dark, and I'll bring you back when I go to the next color. Okay, so I got that whole bottom down there kind of done, and now what I'm going to do is start bringing in this lighter green. We have This is the lightest green I have, so I need to do some blending as well. I've rinsed out my little uh, brush here, and we're just going to start over here and kind of see what that green does. All right, so I think the green right now is is done. Now it's about going in and doing the flowers. Um, so I'm gonna play around with that and I will bring you back if there's anything really earth shattering different than what we've been doing. So very, very happy so far today. I think it's, I'm, again, sometimes I just wanna leave it like that and just do the background and then walk off. I know most of the other people the other way. They hate doing backgrounds. I actually really like doing backgrounds. So, so fun. All right. Well, here we go, guys. Uh, that was the end. So as you can see, what I made a decision was to, and I had been thinking this whole time, almost like it was like a wrought iron frame, like you were looking through a top of a garden gate into the garden. Um, overall, pretty happy. There were a few things. Um, that reactivating of stuff could made for a couple of muddles here and there but overall I really love the colors now the flowers and stuff I went in and I didn't do that with the I messed around with them and and didn't really like how the colors were working for the the blending that I was doing so instead what I did is I went and painted over them in very very light acrylic and then worked on top of them and I used some colored pencil and also went back in and did some um, use of the Crayola super tips for some of the shadows and things. So that ended up being a little bit different, but I love this background. I love how it worked. Um, and I definitely will be doing this more going forward. Just how I'm going to do it, I'm not 100% sure, but pretty happy with it for this week. So we are done with this what week is this week number six of 52 in 2022 look at this hodgepodge mess I love having these over here on this side though it's it's a it's a lot of fun um, I have went ahead and started working on the next next weeks and I'll be sharing that with you uh, in just a little bit but just to see what we're going forward is that it is the lovely heart for what else Valentine's Day which is on Monday so that will be for week 7 of 52 in 2022 so hope everybody has a great weekend I hope you enjoyed this uh, let me know if you've ever seen this before this type of technique because I haven't and if so I'd love to know if there's a YouTube channel I can go and watch and see a little bit better I'm wondering if doing it and then using some type of fixative might be uh, a possibility and then there's always the masking of the things that I, I don't want to mix but I don't know yet we'll have to figure out I really like it though and was so excited as you can tell all right have a great weekend everyone remember keep coloring those pages bye for now <laughs>